All right, in this section, we're going to learn prompt engineering. We're going to learn all the prompt engineering techniques that we need to learn to get the best performance when using ChatGPT. But first, we need to know what's prompt engineering and why do we need to learn prompt engineering? All right, as you might remember, a prompt is just a set of instructions that we give to ChatGPT to do a task. And prompt engineering is simply working with this prompt to get better results. So a good prompt will get always a better response. And well, that's the purpose of this course, to get better responses when using ChatGPT. And prompt engineering is a technique used for refining large language models like ChatGPT to obtain a desired output. This is the process of building prompts for AI models to enhance their performance on a specific tasks. And why do we need to learn prompt engineering? Well, it's simple because, as I said before, every time we build a good prompt, we increase the chances to get a good response. If you're new to ChatGPT, probably you're just giving some questions to ChatGPT or just giving the goal of your task. That's not bad, but to get better results, you need to use prompt engineering techniques. And in this section, we'll learn the most useful prompt engineering techniques that you need to learn to get the most out of ChatGPT. All right. In this video, we're going to learn the structure of the basic prompt. The basic prompt consists of two elements. First, we have the goal of the task. And this is uh, the main goal of your task. For example, if you want to create uh, an article about how to learn a programming language, for example, that will be the goal of your task. Create an article on how to learn a programming language. That's the goal of your task. Well, that's the first element of the basic prompt. And the second element is extra information. This can be a role, constraints, and so on. Basically, the extra information that we give are part of what we're going to learn in prompt engineering. So, for example, there is a prompt engineering technique called role prompting. And well, that is the extra information that we will add if we use this prompt engineering technique. Also, well, there is constraints to set some limitations to, to the tasks that we're giving, and there are more other things that we're going to learn later on this course. And now, let's create a basic prompt, and let's compare what happens if we only give the goal of the task, and what happens if we give the goal of the task plus extra information. So now let's go to ChatGPT, and let's make a comparison. So first, I have this prompt and this is only a prompt with the goal of the task. So here my goal is to write a 500 word article on how to learn a programming language. So if I press enter, now I'm going to get a very generic prompt because there are not so many details about what this article should be about. The main goal is to be about learning a programming language, but it doesn't tell ChatGPT who is going to read this article, so what's the target audience. It doesn't tell ChatGPT other key details that will help improve this 500 word article. So we can say that this is an incomplete prompt. So now let's create another prompt that has not only the goal, but also some extra information. And here is the second prompt. So. In this prompt, I'm telling ChatGPT to act as a blogger. So this is going to be some kind of role. We're going to see this in much more detail later. And then besides the goal, which is this, I'm adding extra information. So I'm saying, considering that readers have no knowledge of coding. So now this is going to be more, uh, more customized to my target audience. So my target audience are people that have no knowledge of coding. So this is going to be a much better article. So now I press enter. All right, and as you can see, we got a much better article and this article is tailored to people that have no knowledge of coding. Okay, now let's continue with the second example. In this case, we're going to use this prompt. And this is a simple prompt that helps us correct a sentence in English. So this is the prompt, correct this sentence. So this is my goal in this task. I just want to get my sentence corrected. 
angle. I press enter and as you can see, ChatGPT is going to give me a correction. And that's great. But now if I give more information in this prompt and I add a role and constraints, we're gonna get a much better response. So in this case, I have a prompt that has the same goal as the previous prompt. So the, the goal of this prompt is to correct the sentence, but I'm giving a role, act as a language tutor, and also I'm saying that the formality of the of the correction should be neutral. And also I'm giving some extra information. So you need to provide an explanation to the correction provided and give examples. So I'm giving some extra information so I get what I want in the response. And well, I press enter and then I'm going to give the sentence that I want to correct. So here's the sentence. All right, ChatGPT just finished with this prompt. And as you can see, we got the correction as in the previous prompt. But here we also got uh, the explanation and also examples. So as you can see, by giving extra information, we can get a much better response. And the response is gonna be customized to our needs. And that's the whole idea of prompt engineering, creating better prompts to get better responses. And we're gonna learn many prompt engineering techniques in the next lectures. In this video, we're going to learn the zero and one shot prompting. All right, let's start with the zero shot prompting. The zero shot prompting is a prompting technique that consists in providing a prompt that is not part of the training data to the model. And in this case, the LLM uses a pre-existing language model trained on diverse tasks to generate text for a new task without additional training. And well, this might sound complicated, but when you do it in ChatGPT, it's much more simple. And I'm gonna show you one example. Here I have a prompt that says, translate the word house from English to Spanish. So in this case, we don't know if in the training data of ChatGPT, there is the translation of the word house from English to Spanish. And in this case, what the LLM does is generate text for a new task without additional training. So. If we give this to ChatGPT, ChatGPT is going to translate this from English to Spanish, even if this wasn't in its training data. And well, that's good. That's good, but sometimes it might not work. In this case, it's always going to work because ChatGPT has training data in English and in Spanish, and probably it also has a translation. And in some particular cases, you will need to give some samples. And that's when one shot prompting comes in handy. Whenever you cannot describe what you want, but still want ChatGPT to give you answers, you can provide some examples. Let's see the following example. In this case, I have the same instruction, translate the words from English to Spanish, and now I have some samples. On the left, I have the words in English, and on the right, I have the words in Spanish. So first I have table, which is translated to Spanish to mesa, and then I have house, and I put a blank space because I want ChatGPT to complete this blank space to generate this text. And that's what one shot prompting is about. We provide one sample to give ChatGPT a better understanding of what we're looking for. And even here, if we don't right here these instructions that says translate the words from English to Spanish, if we delete these instructions and we only uh, type the sample table hyphen mesa and then house hyphen, sometimes in some cases ChatGPT is going to understand what we're looking for and is going to generate the right translation. And well, now let's test all of this in ChatGPT and let's see whether ChatGPT recognizes what we're looking for by typing this. So we have table hyphen mesa, so the word in English, then the word in Spanish, and then house, and then hyphen and blank space. Let's see if ChatGPT can understand what's the goal of this prompt. So I'm going to press enter, and now let's see what ChatGPT does. So it says the word house translate to casa in Spanish. Great, so by using one shot prompting, ChatGPT was able to understand the goal of our prompt. And this is very useful when you cannot describe in words what you're looking for. For example, I have here uh, an example of this. And in this case, I have uh, in my first sample, 
I have this sentence. I study prompt engineering techniques every day. And then I have these random letters. So if you analyze this carefully, you will see that the random letters represent the first letter of each word. For example, I here, then S in study, then P in prompt, and so on. So it's the first letter on each word. And well, in this case, I could say I could tell ChatGPT just to extract the first letter of each word in an instruction. But let's imagine that you just cannot describe in words what you're looking for, and you just type these first letters here on the right and on the left, you type the sentence. And well, you want to get the same, uh, the same result on the second sentence that you have. So in this case is, I like artificial intelligence. So I type hyphen, and now let's see if ChatGPT is able to understand the goal of my prompt. So I press enter, and now let's see what happens. So in this case, ChatGPT was able to recognize that I was trying to generate acronyms from sentences. However, in a previous test I did, giving just this one single sample was not enough for ChatGPT to recognize the goal of my prompt. And in these cases, what we have to do is use another prompt engineering technique called few shot prompting. And that's what we're going to learn in the next video. Few shot standard prompts are the standard prompts we've seen before, but with examples of the task in them. And the reason why we need to include examples is to increase the chances to get the desired result. So we have to add examples of the tasks that the prompt is trying to solve. Few shot standard prompt consists of a task description examples and the prompt. In this case, the prompt is the beginning of a new example that the model should complete by generating the missing text. So we have the task description in translate English to Spanish. Then we have the examples. For example, table is mesa in Spanish, apple is manzana, and then we have the prompt. And in this case, we only write the word in English, in this case, house. And in this way, we're not only telling the model to translate from English to Spanish, but also we're giving some examples. So it has some context and also will tell the model what format the output should have. Now let's create a new prompt using this approach. Say we want to extract airport codes from the text, I want to fly from Orlando to Boston. Here's how you'll do it with few short standard prompts. So first you write the task description, in this case, extract the airport codes from this text, and then we write examples. So the first one, uh, the first example is gonna be, I want to fly from Los Angeles to Miami, and the uh, airport codes LAX and MIA. And the second one is, I want to fly from Nashville to Kansas City. And well, then we write the airport codes that belong to those airports. And well, finally, we write the prompt. And in this case is, I want to fly from Orlando to Boston. And with this, we're telling the model to complete this text with the airport codes. And we're going to get the airport code in the format we specify in the example. In this case, we're gonna get MCO and BOS, which are the right answers. Keep in mind that previous research found that the actual answers in the examples are not so important, but the label space is. A label space is all the possible labels for a given task. You could improve the results of your prompts by even providing random labels from the label space. Let's test this by typing random airport codes in our examples. Okay, we're gonna use the previous prompt, but here we're gonna change the airport codes. They're not going to be the right airport codes as before, but they're going to be only random airport codes from the label space. For example, in the first one, I'm going to write then N-O-A-K. So then from Denver and the other from Oakland, I think. And well, they are not the right answer, but they belong to the label space. So they are just random airport codes. And the same for the second. So I write Dal from Dallas and Ida, I think from Idaho. And now we try this prompt on ChatGPT. We're going to get the right airport codes for Orlando and for Boston. So as we can see, whether our examples are correct or not, we have to include random labels from the label space. This will help us improve results and instruct the model on how we want 
to format the answer. And as a side note here in the airport codes, if you write just random letters like A, B, C, D, E, F, you're probably not gonna get the right answer. And this happens because A, B, C and D, E, F are not random labels from the label space, but just some random letters. So make sure that you include random labels from the label space and not something that doesn't make any sense. When working with ChatGPT, we have to avoid bias in our prompts, especially when using the few shot prompting technique. As you may remember, this technique consists in providing samples to ChatGPT in our prompt. And every time you use this technique, you have to avoid these two things. First, we have the sample ratio. And let's imagine that we want ChatGPT to classify some emails as important or spam. So if we know that 60% of emails are important and 40% of emails are spam, then in the samples that we provide to ChatGPT, it has to follow a ratio 3 to 2. So if we give 5 samples, 3 have to be important and 2 have to be spam because that's the ratio that the total number of emails have, 60% and 40%. Now, if this percentage is changed, then the sample radio should also change. For example, if 90% of emails are important and only 10% of emails are spam, then the sample radio should be 9 to 1. So in the sample that we give to ChatGPT, we should provide 9 emails that are important and 1 that is a spam. So as a rule of thumb, the sample radio that you provide to ChatGPT should be the same as the original sample. And the second thing to consider is the sample order. And well, let's imagine that we have some tweets and we want to classify them as positive or negative. And in this case, what we have to make sure is to have randomly order samples. So in this case, we should avoid putting two positive in the beginning and two negatives in the end. Or if we have, for example, 10 samples, then we should avoid putting first five positives and then at the end five negatives and that's the two things to consider samples radio and samples order just keep in mind that this might not be a big issue as chat gpt gets smarter so these two techniques are some recommendations that we should consider taking into account the current state of gpt 3.5 and gpt 4 as these two models evolve, these two things might not be so relevant. All right, in this video, we're gonna see what's the output template. And the output template is just a format that ChatGPT is going to follow when giving responses. And to indicate what's that format, we have to use these words, follow this format. And then we have to continue with the format that we want ChatGPT to follow. In this simple example, this format will uh, include the name, the age, the height, weight, and birthday of a person, for example. And this is just like uh, a form. It's like ChatGPT is going to fill a form following this format. That's just the basic idea of what this is about. And well, now let's see an example using ChatGPT. The first example is the following. So I want to read books that are similar to Harry Potter and I'm asking ChatGPT to recommend me 10 fiction books similar to Harry Potter. But ChatGPT has to follow the format that I'm showing here. So first it has to give me the name of the book, then the author, the year the book was published, the length, and finally the rating. So if I don't provide this, let's see what ChatGPT is going to do. All right, as you can see, if I don't indicate the template output, ChatGPT is only going to follow any format it comes up with. So as you can see, well, it's recommending me books and it's listing books. And well, first it writes the name of the book, then the author, and then a summary. But now if I provide this template, we're gonna get a more customized response.
All right, now we got the response with the formats that we specified. And well, we got the 10 books, we got the name of the book, the author, the year published, length and rating. And that's great. Now let's see a second example. And with the second example, I want to show you that the template can follow a different structure. So let's see the second example. And in this second example, I'm telling ChatGPT to act as a language tutor. So I'm using role prompting first, and then I'm telling the goal of this prompt. And I'm saying, I give you some words in English I'm having trouble pronouncing and you'll provide the following information. So I want uh, the phonetic translation using the IPA, which stands for International Phonetic Alphabet, if I'm not wrong. And then I say, I split the word in phonetic symbols and give examples on how to pronounce each letter following the format below. And this is the format. And as you can see, it has a different structure from this format that I used before. And in this case, first I'm telling ChatGPT to put the phonetic symbol uh, inside this slashes and then to use this sentence. So this is like the, uh, a template with placeholders. So I'm telling ChatGPT to write similar to that and then indicate the letter that is referring to and then sound in and then to provide an example. Now this might not make so much sense but I'm gonna give a word to ChatGPT and you're gonna see this in action. So now I press enter and now let's see what ChatGPT does. So now it's telling me to provide a word so it does all these tasks. And I'm gonna provide a word, sometimes I have trouble pronouncing, which is rarely. All right, I got the response and as you can see, well, it provides two versions, American English and British English. And if you see the, the example here, it divided or it split the, the word into single letters. And we have the phonetic symbol and then we have the template that we provided. So similar to the R sound in RAM, for example. And then we have the symbol and similar to the sound in the word bet. And that's how I can see which is the, the sound that I need for this word. And that's another way to use the output template. You only need to type a sentence and include some placeholders. Okay, the next approach we're gonna see is role prompting. Sometimes the default behavior of ChatGPT isn't enough to get what you want. This is when you need to set a role for ChatGPT so that you can customize its behavior. Say you want to practice for a job interview. By telling ChatGPT to act as a hiring manager and adding more details to the prompt, you'll be able to simulate a job interview for any position. For example, you can tell ChatGPT to act as a hiring manager for a software engineering position, a data science position, or anything you want. And as you can see, ChatGPT is going to ask you about your educational background, your work experience, and anything else you will have to say in a job interview. And well, we got this because we could customize the behavior of ChatGPT. And just like that, you can turn ChatGPT into anything you want. You can turn ChatGPT into a language tutor to practice a foreign language like Spanish or a movie critic to analyze any movie you want. You only need to start your prompt with the word act as a and then add as many details as possible. If you need some inspiration, check this repository where you'll find prompts to make ChatGPT behave like a stand-up comedian, doctor, and more. In this video, we're going to see the perspective prompting technique. And this technique is similar to the role prompting, but in this case, we're going to use different perspectives to solve an issue. So we have an issue that we want ChatGPT to solve and we're going to give ChatGPT different perspectives to get different solutions and to find on our own the best way to solve our issue. And well, it can be one perspective, two perspectives or more. The more perspective we have, the more chances we have to get the best solution to our problem. So let's go to ChatGPT to see an example. All right, let's imagine that we have an issue which is related to employees that are complaining about the lack of available parking spaces on the office building. So if we ask ChatGPT the following question, how to solve the lack of available parking spaces at the office building, ChatGPT is going to 
provide a generic answer. All right, we got different suggestions to our problem, short-term solutions and long-term solutions, and they are not bad, but now we're going to customize this using the perspective prompting technique. So here's the prompt that we're going to use. First, I'm gonna start by saying, I'll give you an issue I have, and you have to find a solution following a specific perspective that I'll also give you. And well, here's the issue. Employees are complaining about the lack of available parking spaces at the office building. And then I'm providing uh, first one perspective, which is a building owner perspective. And this perspective is about increasing parking spaces. And then the second perspective, which is the employees perspective. And well, this is more related to the province of the employees, which is uh, finding parking stressful and having limited commuting options. Now, by providing these two perspectives, we're gonna get solutions tailored to each perspective. So I'm going to press enter and we're gonna see what ChatGPT answers. All right, ChatGPT finished with the response and now we see that we got, um, we got suggestions that are related to each perspective. For example, about the building owner perspective, it's the answers are focused about the parking space. So for example, ChatGPT recommends uh, space optimization, rent or lease, uh, then time limited spaces, cost analysis, and so on. And for the employee's perspective that is more related to finding parking stressful and limited commuting options, is suggesting remote work, then also carpool incentives, biking options, then open dialogue, stress reduction measures, and so on. And well, we could get answers for each perspective and then we can find which is the best solution. And this is different from the first, uh, the first prompt, which is very basic. And we got also a generic response, which is more related to the lack of space. So we got only time location, valet service, parking fees, and so on. So as you can see, if we didn't provide the perspective number two, the employee's perspective, we wouldn't get these suggestions. And that's the cool thing about the perspective prompting. The more perspective we give to ChatGPT, the more alternative solutions we get and the more chances to find the best solution to our problem. Okay, the next two approaches we're going to see are very useful when it comes to generating text for emails, blogs, stories, articles, and more. The first is something I like to call adding personality to your prompts, and the second is generating knowledge. Okay, first, by adding personality to our prompts, I mean adding a style and descriptors. Adding a style can help our text get a specific tone, formality, domain of the writer, and more. For example, you can write a prompt like this. Write a topic in the style of an expert in field X with 10 years of experience. By seeing the words expert in field X with 10 years of experience, you're telling ChatGPT what the specific tone, the formality, and the domain of the writer should be. But to customize the output even further, we can add descriptors. A descriptor is simply an adjective that you can add to tweak your prompt. Say you want to write a 500 blog post on how AI will replace humans. If you create a standard prompt with the words write a 500 blog post on how AI will replace humans, you'll probably get a very generic post. However, if you add the adjectives such as inspiring, sarcastic, intriguing, and entertaining, the output will significantly change. Let's add some descriptors to our standard prompt. So now instead of saying write a 500 blog post on how AI will not replace humans, we're adding an adjective, and here the adjective is witty. Then we're also adding uh, some extras here and explain using fun examples. So we're telling again, to use funny examples. So we're giving another adjective. So those are the two descriptors we're using in this prompt. And as you can notice, we also are giving a style to this prompt by saying uh, the style of an expert in AI with 10 years of experience. All of these add a different touch to the text generated by ChatGPT. A side effect of this is that our text will be hard to detect by AI detectors. Finally, we can use the generated knowledge approach to improve our blog post. This consists in generating potentially useful information about a topic before generating a final response. 
For example, before generating the post with the previous prompt, we could first generate knowledge and only then write the post. So we can write a prompt saying, generate five facts about AI will not replace humans. Once we have the five facts, we can fit this information to the other prompt to write a better post. So now as you can see, I added the words, use the above facts to write a WD500 blog post on why AI will not replace humans. So in this prompt, we're using the five facts we like the most to create a better post. Now it's time to put into practice everything we learned so far with some exercises. And we're going to see four exercises that you have to solve on your own. And then we're going to solve together the exercises in the next video. All right. The first exercise is this one. We have to create a prompt that advertises the latest iPhone. And to do this, you have to use just a simple prompt, the basic prompt. And well, you have to set the goal and then add some extra information. And you have to consider the target audience and a slogan and the length of the of the ad. Just use your creativity for this. There is no right answer for the target audience, slogan or length. That's the first exercise. Then in the second exercise, we have to use role prompting to create a prompt that turns ChatGPT into a psychiatrist so that you can simulate a psychiatry appointment. And you know what are the words that you need to use to turn ChatGPT into a psychiatrist or any other type of role that you want. That's the second exercise. Now let's see the third exercise. And in this case is about um, output template. We have to rank the world's largest cities by population. And we have to create a template that includes the city population in 2020, population in 2019, and the growth rate. That's the third exercise. And now the fourth and final exercise, we have to generate an article on how AI will take over the world. And we have to add descriptors to the prompt so that the article has a humorous and sarcastic tone. And you can generate knowledge first before generating this article. These are the four exercises that you have to solve on your own. And once you solve these four exercises, watch the next video to see the prompts that I created to solve these exercises. All right, let's solve the exercises that we've seen before. The first exercise was about creating a prompt that advertises the latest iPhone. And we have to define a target audience, slogan, and length. So now we go to ChatGPT, and here's the prompt that I created for this exercise. So in this prompt, I'm telling ChatGPT to act as an advertiser and to create an engaging ad to promote the latest iPhone. So first I'm using here the role prompting technique, and then I'm telling ChatGPT the goal of this prompt. Then I'm adding some information like the target audience, which is young adults age 18 to 30 years old. Then the slogan that I just came up with, and this is the Apple slogan, think different. And then I'm telling ChatGPT that this is going to be an ad for YouTube, so it should be 60 seconds. So now if we press enter, we're going to get a customized output thanks to all the information that we provided. All right, ChatGPT just finished generating this ad. And as you can see, well, we got all this ad and that's it. Now let's move on to the next exercise. So now I go to the second exercise and this was creating a prompt that turns ChatGPT into a psychiatrist so that we can simulate a psychiatry appointment. And well, now I'm going to um, paste my prompt and this is my prompt and it's very straightforward. First, I tell ChatGPT to act as a psychiatrist and then I give details on how it should behave. So I will be your patient and you will ask me questions to simulate a psychiatry appointment. And then I say that my first sentence is high. So if I press enter, then ChatGPT is going to act as a psychiatrist and then it's going to ask me questions as if this was like a psychiatry appointment. So now it answered hello and welcome. It's nice to meet you. How can I assist you today? Is there something specific you'd like to talk about? And now I can answer this and we can start a conversation as if this was a psychiatry appointment. All right, now let's see the third exercise. And this was 
to rank the world's largest cities by population. And we have to create a template that includes the city population in 2020, in 2019, and the growth rate. So let's go to ChatGPT, and here's the prompt that I created. So first, I'm defining the goal of this task, that is to rank the world's largest cities by population. And then the format that ChatGPT should follow and that I created was this one. Just um, first the rank, then Kaifen city, then 2020 population, then 2019 population, and finally the growth rate. So now if I press enter, we're gonna get the largest cities by population following this format. All right, ChatGPT gave me the top 10 largest cities and it also followed this template that I provided. So now let's continue with the next exercise. And in this one, we have to generate an article on how AI will take over the world. And we have to add descriptors and also generate knowledge. And well, I'm going to start by generating knowledge. So I go here and I'm going to tell ChatGPT, tell me five ways on how AI will take over the world. ChatGPT provided five ways on how AI will take over the world, and I'm gonna use some of them, like autonomous warfare, then uh, control over information, and then one more, which is gonna be advanced social engineering. So I'm gonna use these three points, and then I'm gonna use the following prompt to create a sarcastic and humorous article on this topic. So. I'm gonna say, write a sarcastic 500 blog post on how AI will take over the world using fun examples and considering the three points below. So I'm gonna put these three points below this prompt and now I'm gonna press enter to get my customized blog post. All right, ChatGPT just created the 500 blog post and well, it considered some fun examples and it was also sarcastic throughout all these posts. And that's it. I hope you got good responses by using the prompt engineering techniques that we learned so far in this course. Now it's time to see the contextual prompting technique. And in this technique, the purpose is to define some context so we reduce the number of topics or the number of choices that ChatGPT has. For example, if we want to create an article about a topic X, if we just tell ChatGPT to write an article about topic X, ChatGPT is going to choose any random subtopic inside topic X. But if we want to make sure that only some specific subtopics are considered in this article, we have to indicate which are those subtopics. And well, that's the whole idea. You have a topic and then you indicate that context. So you can have one, two, three contexts. And if this is an article, this context will be just a subtopic. And well, now let's go to ChatGPT to see an example. All right, here's the example that we're going to use. Summarize the evolution of technology using the key events in technology below. So if I only tell ChatGPT to summarize the evolution of technology, it's going to consider any random event. But if I ask ChatGPT to focus on these four events, the beginning of the internet, Apple One uh, release, then IBM invents the PC and Apple releases the iPhone, then the summarization is going to be focused on these four subtopics. And well, now I'm going to press enter and see the result. All right, as you can see, we got the summary and then also ChatGPT ordered this by year. So first we have the beginning of the internet in the 60s, then uh, Apple One released in 1976, then IBM bent the PC in 1981 and Apple releases the iPhone in 2007. And as you can see, all this summary of the evolution of technology is focused on these four key events. And that's what we got by using the contextual prompting. The lettering prompting technique is a technique that is very useful when solving complex problems. When we have a complex problem, usually we build a prompt that is very long. And if we give this prompt to ChatGPT, sometimes ChatGPT is not going to give the best response. And this happens because usually long prompts are 
very hard to understand and ChatGPT could fail to understand what we're trying to get with our prompt. And that's why when we have a complex problem, we have to divide the problem into sections. And for each section, we should create a prompt. So let's imagine that you have a project that is about automating Excel reporting and you want to create a pivot table, you want to add charts and you want to create also Excel formulas. So instead of creating a very long prompt, including the three things, what you can do is split this project in three parts. So first, the, the first part should be the pivot table. The second part should be the Excel charts and the third part should be the Excel formulas. So now we step by step tell ChatGPT what we want to get with each prompt. And now we're going to see this example in ChatGPT. Okay, and here's an example that I already solved. And the purpose of this is show you how I split this long prompt that I have here. So this prompt does everything I told you. But right now, this prompt is well written. But before, it was a very, very long prompt that I had to rewrite to split in three prompts. So here I'm going to delete this. And the first part of the prompt is this one. Write Python code to create a pivot table that shows how much male and female spend on each product line. And I'm referring to this Excel file. Well, the purpose is not to understand the Excel file, but only to see that the first prompt is trying to create a pivot table using Python code. Then let's have a look at the second part of the prompt. And here I'm telling ChatGPT to add an Excel chart with Python code. And then I'm indicating what this chart should be. In this case, it's a bar plot that shows how much each gender spent on each product line. So this is the second part of the prompt. And then ChatGPT does what I indicated. And then the final part of the prompt is adding Excel formulas using Python code to calculate the total of each column in the pivot table and then put those cells in current style. So by splitting this long prompt and actually also rewriting the very long prompt that I had and then splitting into three prompts, I was able to solve this Excel reporting. And then I got my report in this link. And I could get that by using the laddering prompting technique. So every time you have a long prompt, what you have to do is rewrite the prompt so you can split them into different chunks and then provide ChatGPT one by one the prompts that you split. And by doing that, ChatGPT is going to understand much better what you're trying to achieve on each part of your prompt. Okay, now it's time to see probably the most powerful approach in this list when it comes to improving results on arithmetic, common sense, and symbolic reasoning tasks. I'm talking about chain of thought prompting. Unlike standard prompting, in chain of thought prompting, the model is induced to produce intermediate reasoning steps before giving the final answer to a problem. In other words, the model will explain its reasoning instead of directly giving the answer to a problem. And why is reasoning important, you might ask? Well, it was found in previous research that the explanation of reasoning often leads to more accurate results. And to use chain of thought prompting, we have to provide few short examples where the reasoning is explained in the same example. In this way, the reasoning process will also be shown when answering the prompt. Here's a comparison between the standard and chain of thought prompting. In the standard prompting, we have a simple input in the form of question and answer. And in the first example, we have Roger has five tennis balls. He buys two more cans of tennis balls. Each can has three tennis balls. How many tennis balls does he have now? So if we multiply three uh, by two and we add five, then we get 11. And that's the, the direct answer. So the answer is 11. And well, that's in the first example. And as you can see in this first example, we gave a direct answer to a problem. However, if we then ask a similar question, we're not going to get the answer we were expecting. For example, now we have the cafeteria had 23 apples. If they used 20 to make lunch and bought six more, how many apples do they have? And well, in this one, we have 23 minus 20 plus six, which is nine. But as you can see, the model output is 27 and this is incorrect. And this happened because we only gave a direct answer to our problem. And this doesn't help when it comes to solving arithmetic, common sense or symbolic reasoning tasks. 
So in these cases, we have to use the chain of thought prompting. And well, if we explain that intermediate reasoning to the model, this will help the model improve its results. So for example, in this case, instead of just saying the answer is 11, we have to describe the reasoning. So we have to write Roger is tied with five balls, then two cans of three tennis balls, each is six tennis balls. So five plus six is 11. And then finally, the answer is 11. And by describing the reasoning in our example, we're inducing the model to do the same in the prompt. So as you can see in the example of the cafeteria, now in the model output, we see that reasoning of the model. So now it says the cafeteria had 23 apples originally. They used 20 to make lunch, so they had 23 minus 20, which is three, and they bought six more apples. So three plus six is nine. And finally, the answer is nine. So we induce the model to do also the reasoning and we help the model produce a better result. The zero shot chain of thought is a prompt engineering technique that eliminates the need for manually crafted examples in prompts by appending the words, let's think a step by step to the target problem fed to the LLM. Research has shown that this technique improves results on arithmetic, common sense, and symbolic reasoning tasks. Because when we add the words, let's think step by step to the end of a prompt, LLMs are able to generate chain of thought that answers the question that we have. From this chain of thought, they are able to generate more accurate answers. All right, and to see this in action, let's go to ChatGPT and let's see some math problems. Because as you might remember, this technique is especially useful for arithmetic and common sense tasks. So here's the task that we have and it's this one. Look at this series. We have a, a series of numbers, 12, 10, 13, 11, 14, and 12. What number should come next? So these are very basic math exercise and here I'm adding the words, let's think step by step, so that ChatGPT generates a chain of thought, which in the end will help generate more accurate results. So here I'm going to press enter and let's see the chain of thought that is going to generate. All right, ChatGPT says that the next number in the series should be 15. And to get to this solution, it created a chain of thought reasoning step by step. So here it analyzed the first sequence, then the second sequence, and then it found a pattern that helped ChatGPT come to this number, to this solution, which is the next number in the series should be 15. And well, we got this thanks to the words, let's think step by step. Now let's see another exercise. And in this case is this one. My pet lizard is 23 centimeters long. Then my pet cat is twice as long as my lizard. My pet dog is 35 centimeters longer than my cat. My pet stick insect is 60 millimeters long. And the question is how much longer is my dog than my stick insect? So this is a simple exercise. And by adding the words, let's think step by step, we're going to generate the reasoning to solve this task. All right, ChatGPT says that the pet dog is 75 centimeters longer than the pet stick insect. And well, to get to this number, it had to uh, to go through this reasoning, first with the lizard, then with the cat, dog, stick insect, and then it compared the dog and the stick insect. And well, we got this reasoning printed here because we told ChatGPT to think step by step. And that's how ChatGPT uh, showed the reasoning here. And then that's how it came to this number. All right, that's the zero shot chain of thought prompting technique. And something that I want to add is that this words, let's think step by step, is sometimes it's getting a bit outdated because GPT-4 doesn't need to get this let's think step by step to show all this reasoning. I did some tests previously and I found that it's not necessary to write let's think step by step for GPT-4 to do all this reasoning and show it here on ChatGPT. However, this is still useful if you use GPT-3.5. So just keep in mind that as these language models evolve, 
Some techniques might not be so necessary as some other prompting techniques, but still by knowing the foundation of prompt engineering, you'll be able to understand much better how LLMs like ChatGPT work. All right, in this video, we're gonna see what are custom instructions and why we should enable this when working with ChatGPT. All right, custom instructions is a feature that makes ChatGPT more powerful by incorporating some of our preferences that we wish ChatGPT to take into account every time it generates responses. So with these custom instructions, ChatGPT is going to know a little bit about ourselves and we're gonna get a much better response because this response is gonna be customized a bit more to our preferences. And to enable this, we have to go here to the sidebar. We open this, then we go to the three dots and we click on custom instructions. And by the way, these are available to everybody. And now that we are in custom instructions, we have to answer two questions. And the first question is, what would you like ChatGPT to know about you to provide better responses? So you have to tell ChatGPT some things about yourself. And here, uh, OpenAI gives you some thought starters, like where are you based, what do you do for work? What are your hobbies and interests? Uh, what subjects uh, can you talk about for hours and some of your goals? And well, you don't need to answer all of these questions, but only the, the ones that you think are important. And for this example, I'm going to type the following. I work on science education programs for third grade students. So with this chat GPT, we'll know that my audience are third grade students and that I'm some kind of science teacher. And now let's go to the second question. And this is how would you like ChatGPT to respond? And well, in this case, this helps ChatGPT to customize the formality of the response and how long the response should be and how we want to be addressed and more things. And something cool that you can include here is the format that you want ChatGPT to follow every time that you have some types of questions. So in this case, I'm going to give you this example, which is when discussing potential solutions for work related items, present the information in a table format. So this is the format that I want to have every time I'm talking about some work related items. And well, I work in a science education program and every time I have questions about this, then I should get my responses in a table format. Then I said outlining the pros and cons of each option, allowing for easier comparison and decision making. So basically I'm saying every time I have a question about science, give me the pros and cons and put all the information in a table so I can easily compare the pros and cons. And that's it. So now, uh, finally, you can enable this for new chats or you cannot enable this for new chats. Well, in this case, I want to enable this for every new chat that I have. So I enable this and then I click on save. And now I'm going to hide this sidebar and now let's do a test. So here I'm going to ask ChatGPT what will be three important things to teach about the Big Bang Theory? So here, if I ask this, now we by default are getting a table and we're getting the pros and the cons in this table. So we didn't indicate ChatGPT in our prompt to create a table or to mention the pros and cons, but since we indicated that in the custom instructions settings, now in every new chat that we have, when we ask war related items, ChatGPT is going to give us the props and cons and we're going to get all of this in a table. And if you want to take this to the next level, you can combine these custom instructions with the output template that we learned in the previous videos. So every time that you have a question, ChatGPT is going to respond to your questions following a specific output template. And as you can see, custom instructions is a very powerful tool that everybody should use to make the most out of ChatGPT. So I'm gonna give you another example here in custom instructions, and I'm going to delete the previous examples. And well, here, what I'm gonna do is, for example, write about my, my work. So here I can answer in the first question that I'm a data scientist and that I use mainly Python, for example. I solely use Python. And for the second answer, I can tell ChatGPT that I don't like to get 
explanations every time that it provides a script. I only want the code, so I can tell this. When I ask you for code, just give me the code without any explanation on how it works. And after I save this, every time that I ask ChatGPT to generate a script, it's going to use Python as the default programming language and also it's not going to explain how the code works. And that's it. Now is your time to enable custom instructions and answer these two questions to get customized responses when using ChatGPT.